Welcome back to Retro Wednesday at the Tidarium here. This is Mike, and today I want to talk to you about all of the wonderful products coming from Ramen Toy. These upcoming releases, we're going to talk about them in order. We're going to go through pretty much all the information that I have about these, and it's kind of exciting with these retro properties, and they're delivering us a lot of things that we're not going to get from any other company. A couple we're going to get from Super 7, but for the most part, most of this stuff is made only by Ramen Toy. I'm excited about it, and we're going to talk about all this coming up. So Ramen Toys already delivered us some modern day Centurions and there's a lot about this that's exciting. First of all, this is finally getting Centurions made with updated articulation, sculpts, and all of that stuff going on. And so very exciting. Last year in April, people paid for the pre-orders and then it was supposed to come out in October. Actually, it was a month late. Came out in November. That's seven months time, lead time on the very first project. And I'm very pleased. I think it turned out very well. An excellent first product. So now getting into this 2022 release schedule, we're going to talk about each one of these. And so first we're going to start with the 80s Commanders 3-pack reissue. So what they've already made before, they're reissuing it with different color scheme. So as you can see, one of the biggest concerns that fans had what the the head sculpt the head sculpts were not what fans expected but for me personally i wasn't really too upset about it because i display mine with the helmets on anyway well also the new ones are going to get new head sculpts and they're going to get new updated helmets and all that kind of stuff and we also just had the opportunity to order new head sculpts and helmets for the original ones with the original deco and all that kind of stuff so the new ones coming out are going to have a more tuned or toy accurate deco color scheme and so with that it's pretty exciting so this upcoming run here now these are going to cost 269 dollars per set and there was an earlier early word pricing which made them a little bit cheaper and all of that but i think that these are excellent figures they work out very well now there's a couple of concerns that i'm going to of course address all of that people don't like that some of some people don't like that they're so small and I can understand that, like the fact that they're the six inch. Now this is Ramen Toy listening to what they felt was the vast majority of consumers that said they wanted to scale with the Marvel Legends and their G.I. Joe Classified and all of those kinds of things. So uh, Star Wars Black Series. So that's why it's the six inch scale and not the seven and a half inch scale for vintage. And that's why the 80 spanners with this scale. Now I'm really not too upset about it, even though I voted for the bigger ones i'm not upset about it for one reason space starts to become a major concern and all of that with these being a little bit smaller they actually fit on a shelf really well so uh, i kind of like that now that i have them in hand and i think they look great and they display very well so the next item on here silver hawks and we're going to get into this with the quicksilver will be the second release after this so this is actually going to be officially licensed, sort of sub-licensed out through Super 7. And Super 7 is also going to be making their own uh, cartoon accurate deco. And these are going to be more shiny, uh, a little bit more stylized, which I really think Silverhawks can handle a bit of a stylized look and still kind of feel like they're in the Silverhawks realm. So still looking pretty cool. I actually do like the designs. Now, if you think you're going to have to swap heads, I believe you have to swap heads to get the visor or the unvisor look. Uh, originally I thought you're gonna be able to have a visor go up and all this kind of stuff but anyway I think it's head swaps but anyway it does look pretty cool the way they have it going on I do like the look of this figure it's my understanding that they actually are using a separate sculptor for the face uh, and the faces going forward so I, I don't know if that's 100% true but that was the plan and so looking at it I think it looks phenomenal the head sculpts the faces all that stuff looks great Here's a prototype next to an 80s commander. Now they are going bigger. And so the silver Hawks are going to be bigger than the 80s commanders. And with that, I'm okay with that also. I'm okay with that scale. So that's going to look pretty good. Here we go with another picture of more of a completed prototype. You kind of see him with his wings. Uh, wing it, wing it. And you also can see Tally Hawk right there. So pretty cool. Now it doesn't include the stand. The stand is just to show you what you could display in if you had one of those stands. And I do kind of want to show the differences real quick. So on the left is the vintage Silverhawk 
and in the middle, of course, is the ramen toy, and on the right, that is Super 7's take, and Super 7 is, of course, going for more of a tune accurate, and with that, you can kind of decide for yourself which one you like better. I kind of, I think I like the ramen toy design a little bit better. So number three on the agenda here is Monstar, Silverhawks Monstar, so let's get into that. Okay, so here is their Monstar, and I think that this looks fantastic. It is a very shiny, reflective, versus even the vintage one wasn't shiny and reflective like this. So, looks amazing in my opinion. I like the paint, sculpt on it, and all that kind of stuff. But, see, this is one picture. This is a real in-hand shot also, and this is about as real as it gets, so you can kind of see how shiny the paint's going to be, how big it's going to be. So, you saw that Quicksilver was bigger than the 80s Commander, and this is way bigger than Quicksilver. This thing is going to be huge. It's going to take up a whole shelf, and I kind of like that. Yeah, and here he is with, I forgot the name of his bird, but anyway, Monstar's bird, and he's got that with it, of course, obviously. He also comes with his, what appears to be a rifle, a <laughs> big old rifle there, and look at that jaw. That thing looks freaky, freaky scary, and freaky good. So real quick, a comparison on the left is the Vintage Toy from Kenner. And then you have, of course, Rama Toy in the middle. And then on the right is Super 7. So looking at which aesthetic you want, which aesthetic you like. And I do believe the, the Rama Toy one is like 120 But the early bird pricing, if you can place that order right now, you can get it for, I think, $85, $85, $89, something like that. So you do get it significantly cheaper if you pre-order it right now. Yes, $85 if you pre order it on a ramen toy right now. And then Quicksilver was an early pre order for like $73, I think, something like that. But it is $100. It's $99.95 for the Quicksilver. Next up on the list, we have the Antagonist Cyborg, which is Centurion's Hacker. So, Hacker looks pretty decent. He's actually going to have compatibility with the Traumatizer. Uh, what they call their land drone and they've already got a prototype so we're going to take a look at that here's the prototype of hacker and you can see everything going on with it and this is compared to an 80s commander the scale seems to work very well scaled to the 80 commander scale so there it is and hacker looks pretty good he looks pretty cool all right so looking on the left this is the kenner centurion's version of hacker and then uh, in the middle is a prototype, on the right is a render, so you can kind of see the color and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it looks pretty good. It is definitely a stylized version of stylized take. It is different than the original. It's not matching the original 100%, and it's its own stylization. It's going to have more updated articulation, obviously, and it's going to be a little bit different. So, still really cool, really exciting. We're going to have some bad guys on your 80s commander shelf. So, the next release after Cyborg is going to be Land Drone or Traumatizer. So here we go with the Traumatizer, and the thing about this is that this was one of the harder figures to get back in the day, and it is really hard to get this day and age, but I actually think there's still quite a few in existence, it's just a lot of collectors have them, and they have them in their collection, and they're not selling them, so it just makes it harder to acquire a vintage one, so this is going to be definitely a sought after item. Now this really won't scale very well with your vintage collection, because it's smaller, or along the 80s commanders, but if you don't have one at all, like you don't have a Traumatizer at all, you get this and just put it in your collection, it will fill a space, it'll fill a hole, and it'll fill it very well because it's got some updated stuff, some updated articulation. Okay, so here we go with like the chest cannon. Now that missile launcher mechanism and all that kind of stuff, I don't know if that missile is going to be removable or if it's just going to be a cannon or what's going on with all of that stuff, but the the way it works is more like the way it works in the show and it's more accurate and so this is really cool that they're doing it like that and overall i like the design i like that it's a little bit different than the vintage one so if you have the vintage one you still have something that's special and getting this you're gonna have something special also i could see people ordering four or five six of these uh, but i don't know the price yet looking at side by side comparison right next to a vintage one and you can see all of the differences, and yeah, the vintage one still has some charm, but this thing looks pretty mean, rough and rugged. It's got its own articu- it's got articulation in the elbow joint or something that we just didn't see from back in the day, so really cool design, really awesome. Alright, so the next release after that is going to be Apache Commander. 
All right, so this is what Apache Commander looks like, and you're going to get the weapon system and all of that kind of stuff, so that's really cool. Uh, he does look pretty good, and this is one of those holy grails for people out there that have been collecting Centurions, and they've got everything Centurion, but, but they want the prototype of this guy and Rex Charger, and those are coming. So this one and then Rex eventually will be coming, and it is a bit of a stylized take. It's the same size and scale as your vintage stuff, so it's going to fit right in, it's just going to be a modern version, a modern iteration. It's not going to look exactly like it now. I personally would prefer it looked exactly like the prototype, but that's not what we're getting, and they're doing this for a few reasons. Uh, there's a lot of reasons behind why they're making it a little bit stylized, a little bit more modern, a little bit different, and not copying it exactly. Uh, staying out of some trouble is one, one way you could say it, but the weapon system is pretty darn close to the vintage one. Here is the vintage weapon system that uh, that just kind of shows how close it's going to be. You can kind of get an idea of it. Say you want to just kind of plug all this into Max or something, or to Jake. You should be able to plug all this in to your existing figures if you want to put this weapon system on one of your existing figures. So uh, that's going to work also. So here we go with the comparison to the prototype that we got back in the day, or did not get back in the day to be more accurate so the the updated modern take does look a little bit different but it does capture the essence and spirit of the original one so you actually will have something on the shelf other than nothing at all okay so this project is going to be a two hundred dollar item but the early bird pre-order price is going to be a hundred and forty dollars now that is because this is made in very very low quantities they have a minimum production it's a minimum order quantity of a thousand but if they can at least get to 800 then they're going to go forward with the project kind of deal but the thing about this is that there's so few of these that are getting made i mean there's already very few in existence from the original one so this one there's only a few getting made because there's not a, a billion people out there that are looking for this so it's very very small production run and to get something that's sort of a holy grail in collecting it's going to be kind of exciting they'll be taking pre-orders for this in june and we should be getting it by december so with that uh some of the stuff that's going to be 2022 kind of pre-orders we won't see till 2023 after this one so then we get into masks so the next one is great white and then the red going so let's go ahead and look at those there's not much along the lines of great white which is gloria baker's shark now this is a newer image and kind of, it's cool and it's exciting. And from one of the other images, it does look like it's all going to convert a lot like an original Kenner vehicle. This is going to be the same scale as the original Kenner vehicle and just giving us stuff that we didn't get back in the day. So uh, I'm going to show kind of what we've seen in the past. Okay, so there have been other people that have made sharks, but they didn't actually transform and convert the way you change it from one mode to another is to literally take parts off of this model kit and then plug in new parts so that's not at all what ramen toys do ramen toy is making a fully convertible one as if kinder made it back in the day how would they do it back in the day and that is what's going on right here so you see that these attempts in the past are cool and they're gap fillers but they're not what ramen. They're not going to be on the level of the ramen toy one. And that is really exciting to finally get this vehicle. And, and kind of curious what they're going to do past this. They're also leading that they're going to be doing a Thunderhawk. So at first it's like, why would you bother with doing a Thunderhawk when you could go get a Thunderhawk? Uh, not really even that expensive on eBay right now. But really, if you're going to be doing a line, let's say they're going to be doing maybe six, seven, eight of these over the course of a few years. You want to have a staple item, like obviously the biggest selling item would be a Thunderhawk or one of these unreleased ones. And so I guess it kind of does make sense. They're going to do their own Thunderhawk. But you can still kind of get one on eBay, uh, mostly complete for like 50 or 60 bucks. Uh, perfect mint ones are go to about 100, 150 uh, with the box and all that kind of stuff. So with that, I mean, I do kind of understand making it. But on the other hand, I mean, I've already got one, so I don't really know if I'd be in on this for a for a, a thunderhawk but it's still kind of cool and i kind of like to see what they do with it but what really is exciting about ramen toys they're making stuff 
that nobody else is going to make. Nobody's talking about making Brave Star. There's no discussion of that from any other company out there. And so here we go. They're hinting at making Brave Star. Hinting. This has not been uh, actually revealed. There's no prototypes. There's no renders or anything like that at all. So it's still pretty cool and it's pretty exciting. So the vintage Brave Star figure actually was already pretty cool. It was a pretty decent figure. It has decent articulation for the time. But I could see Ram and Toy just really bringing this character into the modern era and just blowing it out of the park, making it look awesome. But Brave Star himself, that's not really who I'm most excited about. Yes, I would definitely be in on a Brave Star. But I'm more excited about other characters we never got in the finish line because there were only nine figures for all of Brave Star. So I'd, I'd like them to make some unreleased characters such as the Shaman. And that's something I think sorely... Uh, missing from everybody's Brave Star display, everybody's Brave Star collection. That'd be a whole lot of fun. I'd also like to see the Judge, the female character that was never made from back in the day, would be outstanding to get the Judge, and she'd be pretty cool, pretty fun. A, a lot of the female characters just didn't get made in the 80s. It's just, it's sad. But it's basic business. And looking at the Dingoes, and the, kind of the wild pack of Dingoes that are going on there, they're in a lot of the episodes, but none of them were really made. So it'd be fun to see them make some dingoes. Wouldn't that be cool? Maybe make one and have a couple of customizable options so that you can buy three of the exact same thing, but make them all look different. And although we have a 3030 they made in the vintage era, the thing is very fragile and it doesn't work more or less for what you want. It doesn't match in this mode in the biped mode it's just way too big and it doesn't really match up very well with brave star so i would like to see them make a 30 30. now there's a couple of things that they could do with it but i really would want this mode to look like this it needs to look right animation right or pretty darn close you know and you might want to do some mass shifting there may be like some sliding of the torso, make a sliding function to where the torso can slide out and the arms and legs can have some sliding extending feature or something so that when it's in horse mode, it looks like a horse. And when it's in this mode, it looks like this. Maybe a swappable mane or something like that. I, I, I'm i sure there's a way to come up with it to make it work, but it, maybe it just comes out and all you get is this as an action figure. So, I mean, who knows? There's a lot of different options out there, but 30-30 is sort of one of the greatest terrible figures from the vintage toy line and i'd like to see a modern iteration so there's my look at what's all coming this year from ramen toy very exciting i'm actually surprised they're doing so much and i'm very pleased these look to be some really amazing designs amazing figures and having already a set of the 80s commanders i'm very pleased with them very happy with them i look forward to everything for this company let me know what you think about in the comments below are you in on any of this stuff are you excited about this like and subscribe to Deer Hanger out.